So we're going to work on some core today. So we're going to do a little core progressions, core stability progression. So, um, and I'm kind of thinking of this because Drew said that, you know, you were having a little bit, and not necessarily your putting game, but the chipping, but in terms of like those, you know, those movements are very, like they're short, they're quick, and we need a lot of core stability for our short game. So I'm just thinking about, you know, how we can um, work on different parts of the body to help, you know, with that. So, and then I think Justin's gonna do some hip work um, with you guys afterwards. So, let's see. All right, so we're gonna start out. So we're gonna be on our mats on the floor. Okay. And so I'm gonna probably do most of the work from the floor. So we're gonna start out basically with our dead bones, right? So we're all gonna be on, um, on our backs. So hopefully this isn't too uh, uncomfortable for anybody. Um, but the basic dead bug is, um, it's an alternating arm and leg, right? So for some of you guys, this will be super easy. You can make a progression by lifting your shoulders off the ground. But what I want to do is just, I want to get into that sort of 90 degree position, right? Where our knees are up and then our arms are straight up as well. Right, we want to make sure that our lower back is pushed into the ground, right? So our core is nice and tight. And then what I want you to do is extend your right arm and your left leg. And it doesn't have to go out that far. We want to make sure that the low back is nice and flat in the ground. So right arm, left leg, then you come back to neutral. And we're going to do left leg, right leg, left arm. So the dead bug is basically just this alternating extension of your appendages, essentially. But it's all going through the core. So my low, again, my low back is nice and flat on the ground. I'd like you to get 10 on either side. 10 rotations. Just strains your neck, just grab a pillow and put it under your head. Or you can just lay your head down on the ground. You don't have to have your head up off the ground. But it is definitely about keeping that the low back flat, the core nice and tight. Justin, every time I extend like this with that left leg, my hip clicks really bad. It's like a big, like, I feel like an, it's kind of like, like the yep. same area. You're probably losing, you micro are losing that flex position, right? So keep tilting. So one of the things I think about is when my one leg's extending, my other leg is pushing up to the ceiling and that'll force me to stay more almost rounded, um, which I have to do because if not, my low back gets involved. So when you finish your 10, go ahead and just put your feet on the ground, kind of relax. 10 on either side. We're going to stay here and we're going to do a little, um, so we're going to alternate. We're going to do this dead bug. So it's a, just a modification. So what you're going to do is arms are going to come one way, knees are going to go the other. And it doesn't have to be very dramatic. But we're turning our upper body and our lower body in different directions. You're going to feel that in your obliques. So again, let's get 10 to either side. Nice and controlled. And breathe. Don't forget to breathe. Exhale with your turns. Inhale as you come back to the center. Good. Again, yeah, you're right, Justin. Like, try to keep your low back nice and flat by bringing your, your hips up as high as you can, right? So my knees, my knees are up pretty high, 90 degrees or more. And that's trying to help me keep my low back nice and flat, as much as flat as much as I can. So if you feel like at any point you lose your ab position, stop there. Only go as far as you can feel like your core working. If you feel like your low back starts to take over, you're, you're going too far. And that's, 
very similar to what happens when you're kind of in your backswing, where if you go further than your body can allow, your low back, that's what happens to me, my low back starts to take over and my core stops working. It's like, usually the way I think about it is only one of them is going to work. We just want the core to work as opposed to the low back muscles. And so when we're finished there, just come on up to, or come back to your sort of neutral position here, because we're gonna, let's see. Yep, we're gonna do one more in this supine position. So this last exercise in this position is going to be like a little crunch, it's gonna be a little crunchy curl. So one leg is gonna be out straight, the other one is going to be bent, and I'm gonna put my hands just right where that low back is, those little dents in your low back. And all I'm gonna do is just curl up and crunch. So it's really small crunch. All I'm getting is literally from my belly button to like underneath my breastbone. So I'm just crunching right there and then I'm going back down with my hands again. I'm gonna be in that low back because as I crunch up, I wanna push that low back. In the Dick, you can keep your legs on the ground. So put your right foot, you're, you're in the right position, but just keep your legs down. So you could bend your right knee and put your feet flat. Good, and keep your left foot down. Now, nope, keep your leg down. You're gonna crunch your upper body. Yep. There you go. So it's a small little crunch. There you go, yeah, it's very good. Roger, that looks great. It's a small movement. So it's literally just thinking your, your ribs are just going from up to crunch. You're not doing a full crunch. And if your neck bothers you, just put your, either take one hand and support your head. We don't want this to be a neck exercise. Really think about your abs doing the job here. Uh, just if you need to support your neck, don't crank on your neck. But Let's do 10 with each leg up. So you're gonna get 20 total crunches. 10 with the right leg up and then 10 with the left leg up. Like we talked about last time, think about some of this stuff when you're done. Like if some of you, I don't know if any of you are playing later today, I know the weather's funky, but if you do some exercise, let's say you do some of this core stuff and you feel like you're, you're getting more range of motion or you feel better when you play that day, that might be something that's a good idea for you to try to do as your, believe as a warm up or an activation because you could just be getting your core going a little bit or your glutes going a little bit. So um, don't just always think that you need to do stretches before you're round. There's a lot of times where this activation will actually make you feel looser, believe it or not. Good, so when you're finished there, we are going to flip it over and we're gonna hit our bird dogs. So dead bugs from our tabletop position. So go ahead, go hands and knees. Yeah, so hands and knees. So basically you want, your knees are gonna be hip width apart. Your wrists are going to be stacked directly underneath your shoulders. And so again, we're gonna start out with the opposite, opposite arms and legs extending. So right arm out, left leg. Yep. And then I want you to take your hand and tap your knee. And then set them all. Roger, opposite arm. So if, it, yep, there you go. Perfect. Much better. Good. Yep. So we're going to Perfect. Do 10 on either side here. And I want you to try to keep your body as quiet as you can. Dick, so, go ahead. You want let me watch. Yep, there you go. Good. And so the cue, guys, think about reaching straight out ahead, not up to the ceiling. So try to get as long as you can from your fingertip to your to your heel, not necessarily go as high as you can. Perfect. Good. Those are two keys, Justin. Thank you. Good. Yeah, there you go. Looks good. When you hit 10, switch sides. So left arm, right leg. And you're going to reach as forward as you can. And then also, if you want to keep that foot flexed, so like you're trying to reach your back wall with your heel. So we're working the core. The core is your stability. Tighten that belly, bring your belly button to your spine. And that will probably help keep you from rocking all over the place as you balance on the one arm and one knee. Mauro, try to go a little slower and hold the position a little bit at the end just to get that feeling of stability. 
whole that yeah that's perfect really good 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 so when you have your 10 come on back down we're going to go through that round one more time so we're going to go dead bugs opposite dead bug arms and legs we'll do curl ups give me one second and then we're going to do um So when you guys are doing this stuff, just to kind of get an idea, you really, really have to be conscious of thinking about your class, like your low back staying super flat. So as you, like you're in this position and you're crushing the ground, like you're right here. Now, as soon as you start to lower one leg, your back is gonna to wanna to arch even a little bit. What I would do is don't just extend your leg all the way. What I want you to do is feel the pressure and start to extend the leg. And as soon as you feel like you lose pressure, you stop. There's no point in doing this exercise to bring your leg all the way down if you lose pressure. So it's just back flat and you start to lower one leg. I feel my abs, I'm good, and I'll bring it back. The idea is not to go all the way, the idea is to keep your back flat. So just feel like you're increasing your pressure onto the ground and that's what you're trying to get out of it. And I'll show you guys just to kind of connect the dots when I get to my portion of why this is super important. Yep, so let's get 10 on either side again. You can keep your head down if you like. If it doesn't bother your neck, you can lift your shoulders. But again, we're pushing that low back, like Justin said, into the floor. As long as you can keep that connection or pressure from the low back into the floor, nice and flat. If you feel like Shannon was saying, like if you feel like something's clicking or your hip is clipping, nine out of 10 times, that's because you're losing that pressure of the low back to the ground. So really try to keep that pressure, almost try to round your back up and or make the range of motion smaller. Don't push into something that hurts or that clicks. Drew, that looks really good, really good. And when we started, your ribs were going up in the beginning of the season, and now you're really flattening. Flatten those ribs even more. Yeah, there you go. That's good. Drew's been working on his abs with, uh, with my class, and um, yeah, it looks and great. Of any of those Rod and Vegan classes, but he's, now he's definitely working on his abs. Oh, no. Oh, oh, there he is. So when you get your 10, go ahead and take a rest, bring your feet to the floor. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do those uh, opposite knees, opposite arms, or windshield wipers. So keep your hands connected. Same thing. This is really, really easy to lose your lower back. So keep it smaller. Think about keeping your knee, think about you have a ball between your knees and you're squeezing them. So stay connected. Don't let this hurt your low back. So go make sure that was good job, Drew. Nice and slow. Roger, good. Good, Dick. Yep, keep that low back. This is one that's really, Moro, go even, just go slower. Slower, slow, slow. There you go, good. Really try to flatten out your lower back. Good. <laughs> And again, if you guys feel like your abs are working and then as you get fatigued, your quads or your hip flexors, the front of your hips start to fatigue out, I'd rather you take a break and then reset and then start over because I'd rather you do five good reps and then five good ones and five crappy ones. Listen, we still have you, right? Feels like a year ago. I know. All right, when you guys are finished there, we're gonna hit those little crunches. So again, your hands will be just in that small of your back, right? And we're just doing a nice easy crunch, but it's all about the core. It's not about your neck, not about the low back, and we're just pushing our low back into our hands. So again, you're crunching from basically your belly button to your breastbone. Exhaling as you come up. 
Drew, try to lift your shoulder blades off as opposed to – there you go. Yep. That's it. Good. There you go, Roger. That's perfect. Good, Moro. You want to get 10 with each leg up. So 20 total. When you're done with 10, switch legs. So one is bent, one is flat, both on the ground. And when you're finished there, we're going to flip on over and we're going to hit our bird dogs. Last time, we're going to do 10 on either side. So again, get it here underneath, or your knees are underneath your hips, wrists are underneath the shoulders, and we're going to extend long, right arm, left leg for 10. Stay on the same side, go nice and slow. Good, when you hit 10, switch sides. So opposites again, long left arm, right leg. I'm flexing my foot in the back to get, reach my heel to the opposite wall. And my core is super tight. I'm drawing that belly button to the spine. So when you hit your 10 there, go ahead and grab a sip of water, take a little quick break. We've got four more that we're gonna do. They should be pretty easy. All right, so everyone is ready. I'm gonna start off in a kneeling position, right? So I'm gonna do a chop. Now you can do anything. If you have a weight, if you've got your golf club, um, I guess I'm just gonna use a golf club because it's kind of like the closest thing I've got and maybe all of you have one. But we're just gonna do a chop, right? So low to high chop. We've done this with the cables in the grid. If you've got bands, so I'm really twisting. So what I'm doing is I'm in a half kneeling position, right? I'm 90 degree knee up front, 90 degree knee in the back. And I'm really using my oblique. So I'm going low to high, but I'm squeezing my butt and keeping my body in neutral spine. And I'm feeling that through my core. So let's get 10 on either side here. So 10 from low to high, I'm going right to left. You can use anything, you can use a pillow. If you don't have anything, that's okay. Just go ahead and do the movement. But really tighten your belly button and try to drive your front heel towards your back knee. <coughs> Dick, you're here. Yeah, up tall. Yeah, that, perfect. Yeah, nice and tall body, neutral spine. We don't want to arch. As you lift, Dick, try to keep staying tall. So fight, you're kind of going forward, stay tall. So yeah, almost it's, exactly. it's like rotating exactly. your torso, and the arms are doing a lot of the work. Good. So it's not about the hips at all. There you go. 
we go. Get a nice twist in there. So we're gonna switch sides when you hit your 10. And we're gonna rotate to the other side. I want you to feel that in your obliques. Those are the muscles on either side of your, your waist, your body, your torso. Good. When you finish your 10, we're going to stay where we are. And we're actually going to do a, we're going to do an anti-rotational hold. So this in theory would be like if you had a cable or a band, you would push, we're going to push straight out and hold. So um, I'm going to have you on both knees. Oscillation, so without, they don't have anything, you're just moving side to side and not letting anything else move. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah, you could turn it either way, but then from there it's just core stays tight and then move your arms fast, but don't let your core move. Move your arms? No, rotate, like hands go this way. Oh, okay. And then keep the core nice and tight. Okay. Yep. Right. So, uh, okay, so basically we're in a kneeling position, right? And so I guess what Justin is saying is keep your core nice and tight because we're holding this position. Nothing is happening between my torso. This is an anti-rotation, but I'm just gonna move the shoulders back and forth so my arms are gonna go a little bit. So see, I'm just moving from the shoulders. The shoulder blades are kind of just, my arms are just going back and forth. Ever so Sorry, Roger, try to go taller. So right now your butt's back a little bit. Try to sit your butt up. So tall, squeeze. Yeah, that's huge. Squeeze your butt cheeks together. That's it. Good. So I was showing Shannon a video today. So keep going about this position is important. Uh, ben Crane, who I think he's won six times on the tour, was talking about how he, when he first started doing these drills, he was so tight here that he was like kind of stuck in this position. And so he works to make sure that he can get up right here so he can be up tall, right? So for us, making sure that we don't get stuck kind of back, we want to make sure that we're using our glutes to get us up tall here. So you're going to squeeze your butt and get up tall. Just like when we swing, we want to finish tall with our glutes squeezed. When we're good there, what we're going to do is we're going to come down and we're going to hit a low plank. So we're going to do two planks. We're going to do low plank and then we're going to do a side plank. So I'm going to time us. We're going to do 30 second low planks. And then we're going to do a, um, we're going to do a 30 second side plank, either side plank. So I want you to come down low. We're on, and if this is this is too much for you, then drop your knees. But I want your body to stay as flat as possible. So none of this, none of this. But again, if almost if, if you're if you can't support yourself, then on the forearms, knees are just barely touching, but your toes and your arms are being most of the work. So we're gonna hang out there for 30 seconds. And I want you to try to tuck your tail. If you're feeling this under, like we've been doing, we're tucking our belly button back to our spine. I can see you, that's awesome. We got eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, rest. Good, take a little quick rest there. We're gonna go into a side plank. So, couple of different versions. You can have one knee back, so your lower leg can be supporting you on the floor. So this is your this is your modified side plank, which you are absolutely can do. Or stack your feet and you can you know extend the arm long, you can have it next to you. We'll go 30 seconds on either side here for whatever modification works for you. So 
I'm gonna go with a little stacked feet, arm up in the air. Drew, are you serious with that light up? What? Show off. So Drew's got, I think, arm and leg up. Woo! So again, this is core. Core is super tight. I'm feeling a lot of this on my left, my left obliques. Again, if your leg is down behind you, totally fine. But keep that core nice and tight. And let's rest there. We're gonna switch sides. Going to our other side for 30 seconds. Again, these are more anti-rotation. Isometric holds. Here we go. 30 seconds. If you're on your, if your feet are stacked and your hips are off the ground, make sure that your elbow is underneath your shoulder. Core is nice and tight. Got less than 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Take a little sip of water, shake it out. We'll go through all of those one last time. Our chop, our anti-rotation, kneeling hold, and our two plants. Hopefully you get a nice little core workout today. And then again, some hips with Justin. He's got some glutes and hip stuff. Um, TPI came out with a, a video this morning with Ben Crane, as he was saying. So, um, you know, we kind of get some of our inspiration from some of these different things. Um, so, just kind of trying to be relevant and bring you what's out there. All right, so we're going to come back to our half kneeling 90-90 position. Again, if you want to use a weight, you want to use um, a cable, whatever works for you. I don't, I didn't want to bring any of those in right now because probably most of us don't have them. But again, my body, my torso is staying fairly, I don't want to say still, I'm twisting. My torso is twisting, my glutes are squeezed, and I'm trying to drive my front heel towards my back knee. And I'm twisting to an end range towards my left. So I'm feeling a little thoracic, but lots of core, lots of obliques. Let's get 10 on either side here. Keep your core nice and tight. Don't let it go. Hold it in. When you get 10, switch the other side. Get your cues, right? Uh, front heel driving towards the back knee. Body is nice and tall, neutral spine. We're not arched. We're rotating the torso. Awesome. So when you finish your 10 there, come back to your full kneeling position. Both knees are nice, tall position, right? We're not, our butt's not out, we're totally tall, just like our golf club. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna keep my entire body nice and still, squeezing my glutes, and all I'm doing is moving my shoulders back and forth. Almost kind of playing tug of war with myself. Just moving my shoulders, Nothing else is moving. My core is tight, my hips are tight. My shoulders are low out of my ears. And I'm just pulling side to side. We'll go for about another 15 seconds here. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Nice, guys. Awesome. Let's come down into our low plank. We're going to hit our low plank and our side planks, and then I'm going to turn it over to Justin. He can torture you. <laughs> All right, so low plank for 30 seconds. Again, let's tuck that tail. If you just need to put your knees down, that's okay, too, but I want you to really tuck your belly. 
belly button to your spine. to you. <laughs> I was searching. Let me see if I can find it. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, all right. Roger, you know, I'm going to show you guys something on the screen. Roger, remember you asked about hip position last week? Like in the rotation, should your hips go like level or, or should they change? So I'm going to share my screen and show you two pictures because the hips being level or not in the backswing is actually a function of what happens at your knees. But I wanted to show you two examples of it. So I'll show you Ricky Fowler, who um, – all right, let's go. Hold on, I'll show you. Right. So Ricky Fowler – I can do it. So you see here with Ricky Fowler, how his, his knees, when he takes his backswing, both his knees start to stay bent and together. Because his knees stay together and they're kind of both bent equally, his pelvis stays level, right? It kind of stays square. Yeah. Versus a complete opposite of that is a guy like Matt Wolf. So he literally bends his front knee a ton and he straightens his back knee a ton, right? And that takes his pelvis to be unlevel. Now, yeah. at this point, I would say – more guys, and this is an extreme version, but more guys, if you look at like textbook golf, they teach you want your back hip to kind of raise a little bit. So in the backswing, your right knee would extend a little, your, back, your front knee would flex, and that does tilt your hips. But the real answer is there's no one way to do it. So I would say whatever you feel comfortable with, you know what I mean? But yeah. that's it. So it's not a function of, it's not a function of you maneuvering your pelvis. It's more of a function of in your backswing, I'll exaggerate, do you straighten the back leg and bend the front one? That'll create the tilt. Or do you keep them both knees kind of bent and then your hips will stay square? Does that make sense? Yeah, but it seems to me that uh, the more you can keep them parallel or level, the better the chance you can just, your, your club will, will, will uh, be faced, you know, properly faced when you, when you come through the ball. Yeah, but and that's why I think it's different. That's what, yeah, I think whatever that's a, whatever you're comfortable with, because the idea too is if you're creating, the reason why people like this is because if you create a tilt this way, that means you can create the opposite tilt the other way. But um, again, whatever keeps your club face square and through the ball, I would, you know, I think that's best, you know? Yes, thank you. 
Yep. All right. So let's, we're going to get doing, we'll do some, we're going to go standing today. So let's get up and I'm going to do some stuff with you guys, more of golf swing wise to get you guys feeling it. Um, what I want to connect the dots with first and most importantly is I want to talk about what you just did with Shannon and why this connects to your golf swing, right? Because I think what happens with a lot of people is they start doing core exercise in the gym and they don't realize, I know I didn't for a long time, how those exercises impact those cues impact your golf swing as well. So let me just show you exactly what I'm talking about. So we just worked on doing core exercise and the idea was what we want to keep our back flat and push down so our abs engage. Now what happens in the swing, if you're not careful, my back is flat here. As I go to take my back swing, it's very easy to get in a position where we arch, which is equivalent to you guys doing a dead bug and arching your back. And as soon as that happens and you arch, you lose all of your core tension and then the back muscles take over. So the way that I want you to think about it is you're one of these, you're either your abs can do the job or your low back can do the job. We want the abs to do the job. Once your back arches and extends, your low back is going to work. Your abs won't it's just the way that it works. So all of those exercises that we just worked on to keep your core engaged with your dead bug, with your bird dog, with the crunch, now let's figure out how to translate that into our golf swing. For me, this is it. Like if I can do this, I'm, my low back stays healthy, but I'm so used to getting here and then standing up straight with my back and then my back takes over. So here's what I wanna do. We're gonna do progressions of this. So let's get, we don't need a club just yet. We're just gonna get in a five iron posture, hands across, hands across, stand up, hands across our shoulders. What we're going to do to start we're just going to do what we've done in the past, no hips, just shoulders, and I want you to just crunch your ribs down and across. And what you should feel is your abs working and that your back isn't arched, so you're almost flexing a little bit more, just holding that position. And then we'll just go the other way, same thing, no arching. So flatten your back and now rotate. Now, the reason why golf is tough is because we just worked on those core exercises, and now we're asking you to keep your core in position and then add rotation to it. It's a lot. Okay? So now, let's just get our hips involved. So we're going to do a three, three-step process. So we're going to rotate in our backswing. Our abs are engaged. Then we're going to twist our hips. Okay? Abs should still feel engaged. I'm not doing this. I'm not standing up tall. So if you see my head in the screen, watch what happens. If I stand up tall, I'm gonna, I'll rotate and then you lose my, I lose my head because I'm standing up. What I wanna do is rotate and keep my head in the picture. I don't wanna lose my posture. Okay, good. Now, this is the third step. Just watch one before we do it because this is where we're all gonna get screwed up because we wanna take a, a backswing. We gotta get our arms involved. As soon as we get our arms involved, that's when we lose this position. So it's going to be three steps. We're going to rotate our body, one. We're going to utilize our hips, two. Notice how I'm still in the picture. And then we're going to, I'm going to push my arms straight out to the camera where I'm pushing them out while maintaining this. I'm not doing this. I'm staying in the picture. So one, rotate your torso. Okay, everyone do it with me. One, rotate torso on your backswing. Two, use your hips. Three, straighten your arms straight out in front of you. Hold that position, keep your core. Good, bring it back. Let's do that again. Rotate your torso, rotate your hips, arms out to the side, breathe. Still feeling this engage. Good, come back, one more. Rotate your torso, rotate your hips, arms straight out. Good. All right, now, because I know we're starting to play more, I'm gonna make sure that we do the other side. So if you're a righty, you're gonna become a lefty. If you're a lefty, become a righty. Exact opposites. Let's work both sides here. Cross your arms, rotate your, rotate your upper body, rotate your hips, rotate your arms, uh, extend your arms. Good, bring it back. Do that again. Upper torso, 
hips, arms. Good, one more. Upper body, torso, arms. Good, take a break. Now, we'll go back to the other side. We're gonna make it cha more challenging because we know that we don't swing a golf club from here all the time. We've gotta get the arms up. So this time, we're gonna do the same thing back to our, our, our uh, normal side, our right side or left side of our righty or lefty, and just watch. We're gonna do the same drill, but it's gonna be one, hips, two, three, arms up, okay? This is, this is your dead bug. This is the same thing, keeping your back flat, getting one arm overhead without losing your back position. It's very easy, watch my head is in the screen. We don't wanna do that, right? That's like the old Jack Nicholas drill where they would just hold his head and he would stay square through the whole time. That's what we want to do here. We want to rotate back, arms up, come up, nothing changes in our posture. So three steps again, do it with me. Arms across your shoulders. Get in your five iron posture. I'm going to move my upper body. I'm going to sit my hips back. I'm going to reach out straight and then I'm going to try to lift arms up. Don't lose your posture. Roger, keep your, keep your head down into your posture more. Good, let's do it again. So rotate your upper body, good. Hips, good, slowly, that's it, good. Good, arms, there you go, good. Yeah, all right, now we're working, I like it. One more. Good, and then let's switch sides. So if you're a righty, you become a lefty. Hey, Drew, when you're doing it, looks good. Try not to move off the ball so much. Try to stay a little bit more like you're in a phone booth. There you go. Good. Good. And let's go to the other side. So if you're a righty, become a lefty. Good, Roger. That's great. All right, now let's go ahead and just grab our club. Make sure you have some space. We'll do the same thing, but let's grab, uh, let's try to do it. So your arms are just gonna kind of be, we're not gonna go, we're not gonna lead with the arms, we're gonna lead with the body. So just have your club kind of ready to go. So we're gonna move shoulders, hips, and then from there, let's just find a club position like where you're back, but your abs are up. So just the arms come last. Think about right now, I'm sitting back, my weight's on my back hip, my abs are engaged, I'm up in a position here. Now for some of you, you might feel that like, wow, I'm nowhere near where I normally get with my hands. And so that is something to consider, right? So listen, if you guys are playing fine and your back feels good, do your thing, but if you're someone like me, who what I've had to do is start to adjust my distances, because what I've realized is because I'm trying to fix this, that I can't get as far back as I used to, because I do it this way and my back can't handle that. So I've had to figure out how to keep in position, but now my distance isn't as much as it used to be. So, you know, six of one half dozen in the other, right? Like what's my big thing, hit it longer or have my back not hurt? So go slow, rotate in your backswing, keep your abs engaged, hips back, and then from there, where can your arms get to? And then now, switch sides. Let's just make sure we do it on the other side. So pelvis, you know, we feel awkward, that's okay. Mid back, torso, arms up. One more. Upper back, pelvis, arms up in position. Good. So that's what we call about maintaining posture. So um, currently, the guy that does this the best, the example, if you want to, if you go online, is like Adam Scott. 
but he's awesome at like he never loses posture all the way through. I mean, he stays down the whole time. Um, but like I said, that was Jack's drill back in the day that his coach would just hold his hair and he would just make sure that he stayed in position the whole time. So for us, the two points where that's going to become an issue is the backswing because it's very easy to stand up in the backswing. And then the other point is on impact where a lot of us get here up and through because we don't have the hip, our hips aren't sitting back, we can't rotate to do that. So as we've, to, to connect the dots with the last two classes, to maintain posture as I see it in the backswing, the main component is making sure that your abs are engaged here. The main way on the downswing to maintain posture is that hip drill we did with the chair where your butt pushes back. If you guys go into the downswing and you stand straight up, you suck your butt in, that's where you're gonna lose posture on the downswing. So now as you start to see what we're doing, we've been hammering on core and glutes and hip hinging and all this stuff. And now hopefully it starts to make sense as to why we're actually doing it. Because those are sort of the motions that you wanna feel as you're going through. And that's what's gonna number one, get you more power, but two, keep your back healthy. All right, so let's just go ahead and stand up. We're gonna do a hip position here. We'll do it standing today though. So I want you to go in a, in a split stance position. So you can, if you, if, you, if you can't bring your feet super close together because of balance, widen them out a little bit, that's okay. But you're gonna be here. I want you to take your golf club and put it out in front of you. All right, so from there, we really wanna work on making sure that our Butt is squeezed on the backside, so none of this, okay? Squeeze your butt cheek. Squeeze your back butt cheek and get as tall as you can. Stand up tall. Good. Now, from here, push your club down into the ground a little bit. That's going to get your abs going. And then just start to rock forward. Rock forward. Get a nice little front of the hip stretch. So back glute squeezed, abs engaged. Push down to the club, rock forward, don't lose posture. Forward and back, forward and back. You should feel a stretch in the front of your back hip. Good. Go ahead and then switch sides. So this is one of my go-tos after the round. The front of my hips get super tight when I'm done playing. So I make sure that I do some variation of this when I'm finished, try to squeeze my glute and open up the front side of my hip. Good, go back to the other side. Now this round, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna hold the club like this, somewhere on the shaft, about shoulder width apart. Now, again, putting the pieces together, here's what it looks like. You're gonna do what you just did, so you're gonna squeeze the back butt cheek, you're gonna lean forward a little bit. Now, start working the arms up overhead. However, you're only allowed to go as high as you can maintain your core, because at some point, this is gonna happen. So, you're stretching forward, your abs are engaged, your glutes squeezed, your arms move up overhead, and if you feel like you're losing any of it, you stop and come back down. And now just work 10 reps, arms overhead, glutes squeezed, abs engaged. Yep, perfect, the rules don't change. So you should feel your glutes squeeze. you should feel your abs engaged. Now you're getting some overhead position. Do about 10 and then switch. Good. Good, that looks good, Dwight. Drew, a little bit more upright. You're getting a little bit archy here. Upright, squeeze your back butt cheek. There you go, good. Nice job, Roger. Good, and then switch sides. Hey, Moro, don't forget to come into a split stand. So one foot in front of the other. 
There you go. Yep, yep. Bring that, bring that right foot forward. So split stands that. Come on. Yeah, give it a little bit more. Keep going. There you go. That's good. Nice. Yep, and arms overhead. Perfect. Okay. All right, good. Now, we're going to end with some more stuff on your non-dominant side. What you'll see we start doing probably every class now that we're playing more is that we're, you know, we're moving on one direction. So now we've got to make sure that we even us out a little bit, okay? So we don't need a club for this. We're going to go back through some of our old drills. It's also good for the brain to try to have to figure out what to do on the other side and mirror yourself. Hands across your chest. We'll start back at the top. We're only doing non-dominant side. So you, if you're a righty, you become a lefty now, okay? So I'm just going to work upper torso only in my backswing. So torso, keep my abs down, come back. We'll just do five with torso only. So if I'm, I'm a lefty now instead of a righty. Just got to make sure we work those other side of those muscles. Good. All right, good. Now it's going to be two steps. It's going to be torso, hips back, like you're leaning back. So one, two, my pelvis turns as well. So it's hip, uh, upper body, hips back. Upper body, hips back. Upper body, hips back. Upper body, hips back. Good. Three step now, upper body, hips back arms reach. You can go out in front of you or up above, whatever one you want. I don't care. So it's going to be upper body, hips, arms. Upper body, hips, arms. Upper body, hips, arms. Upper body, hips, arms. One more. All right, now everyone's gonna look real silly. Get a, get a grip like you're holding the club, and let's do the, let's do a full swing, opposite side, slow though. So we really have to think about it. So my upper body's moving, my hips are moving, up, controlled, work ourselves through. Let's just see what that feels like on the other side. You're probably saying I can't even do it well on the right side. How am I doing on the left? Don't worry, I feel the same way. One more. Good. All right. 